Book three, chapter seven of History of the Reformation in the Sixteenth Century, Volume One by Jean Henri Merle d'Aubigne. Translated by Henry Beveridge. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter seven Tetzel's attack, Luther's reply, Good works, Luther and Spalatin, Study of Scripture, Schurl and Luther, Doubts on the Theses luther for the people a new suit the reproaches timidity or silence of luther's friends had discouraged him the attacks of his enemies had the very opposite effect this frequently happens the adversaries of the truth while thinking by their violence to do their own work often do that of god himself the gauntlet which had been thrown down was taken up by tetzel with a feeble hand luther's sermon which had been to the people what his theses had been to the learned was the subject of his first reply he refuted it point by point in his own way and then announced that he was preparing to combat his adversary at greater length in theses which he would maintain at the university of frankfurt on the oder then said he adverting to the conclusion of luther's sermon then every one will be able to judge who is heresiarch heretic schismatic erroneous rash and calumnious then it will be manifest to the eyes of all who has a dull brain who has never felt the bible read christian doctrines understood his own teachers in maintaining the propositions which i advance i am ready to suffer all things prison cudgel water and fire one thing which strikes us in reading this production of tetzel is the difference between his german and that of luther one would say that an interval of several ages is between them a foreigner especially sometimes finds it difficult to comprehend tetzel whereas the language of luther is almost the same as that of our day a comparison of the two is sufficient to show that luther is the creator of the german language no doubt this is one of his least merits but still it is one luther replied without naming tetzel tetzel had not named him but there was nobody in germany who could not have placed at the head of their publications the name which they had judged it expedient to suppress tetzel tried to confound the repentance which god demands with the penance which the church imposes in order to give a higher value to his indulgences luther made it his business to clear up this point to avoid many words said he in his graphic style i give to the wind which besides has more leisure than i have his other words which are only sheets of paper and withered leaves and i content myself with examining the foundations of his house of burr thistle the penitence which the holy father imposes cannot be that which jesus christ demands for whatever the holy father imposes he can dispense with and if these two penitences were one and the same it would follow that the holy father takes away what jesus appoints and thereby makes void the commandment of god ah if it so pleases him let him maltreat me continues luther after quoting other false interpretations of tetzel let him call me heretic schismatic calumniator or anything he likes i will not on that account be his enemy but will pray for him as for a friend but it is not possible to allow him to treat the holy scriptures our consolation romans fifteen four as a sow treats a sack of corn we must accustom ourselves to luther's occasional use of expressions too harsh and homely for our age it was the custom of the time and under those words which in our days would violate the proprieties of language there is usually a force and justice which disposes us to pardon their rankness he continues thus he who buys indulgences say our adversaries does better than he who gives alms to a poor man not absolutely in extremity now let them tell us that the turks are profaning our churches and crosses we will be able to hear it without a shudder for we have amongst ourselves turks a hundred times worse who profane and annihilate the only true sanctuary the word of god which sanctifies all things 
let him who would follow this precept take good care not to give food to the hungry nor clothing to the naked before they give up the ghost and consequently have no need of his assistance it is important to contrast the zeal which luther thus manifests for good works with what he says of justification by faith indeed no man who has any experience or any knowledge of christianity needs this new proof of a truth of which he is fully assured viz that the more we adhere to justification by faith the more strongly we feel the necessity of works and the more diligently we practise them whereas lax views as to the doctrine of faith necessarily lead to laxity of conduct luther as st paul before and howard after him are proofs of the former all men without faith and with such the world is filled are proofs of the latter luther comes next to the insulting language of tetzel and pays him back in his own way at the sound of these invectives methinks i hear a large ass braying at me i am delighted at it and would be very sorry that such people should give me the name of a good christian we must give luther as he is with all his foibles this turn for pleasantry coarse pleasantry was one of them the reformer was a great man undoubtedly a man of god but he was a man not an angel and not even a perfect man who is entitled to call upon him for perfection for the rest adds he challenging his opponent to the combat although it is not usual to burn heretics for such points here at wittemberg am i dr martin luther is there any inquisitor who pretends to chew fire and make rocks leap into the air i give him to know that he has a safe conduct to come here an open door and bed and board certain all by the gracious care of our admirable duke frederick who will never protect heresy we see that luther was not deficient in courage he trusted to the word of god a rock which never gives way in the tempest but god in faithfulness gave him still further aid the bursts of joy with which the multitude had hailed luther's theses were soon succeeded by a gloomy silence the learned had timidly drawn back on hearing the calamities and insults of tetzel and the dominicans the bishops who had previously been loud in condemnation of the abuses of indulgences seeing them at length attacked had not failed with an inconsistency of which there are but too many examples to find that at that time the attack was inopportune the greater part of the reformers friends were frightened several of them had fled but when the first terror was over the minds of men took an opposite direction the monk of wittemberg soon saw himself again surrounded with a great number of friends and admirers there was one who although timid remained faithful to him throughout this crisis and whose friendship at once solaced and supported him this was spalatin their correspondence was not interrupted i thank you says he when speaking of a particular mark of friendship which he had received from him but what do i not owe you it was on the eleventh of november just fifteen days after the publication of the theses and consequently when the minds of men were in a state of the greatest fermentation that luther thus delights to unbosom his gratitude to his friend in the same letter to spalatin it is interesting to see the strong man who had just performed a most daring exploit declaring from what source he derives his strength we can do nothing of ourselves we can do everything by the grace of god by us all ignorance is invincible but no ignorance is invincible by the grace of god the more we endeavor of ourselves to attain to wisdom the nearer we approach to folly it is not true that this invincible ignorance excuses the sinner were it so there would be no sin in the world luther had not sent his propositions either to the prince or to any of his courtiers the chaplain seems to have expressed some surprise at this and luther answers 
i did not wish my theses to reach our illustrious prince or any of his court before those who think themselves specially addressed had received them lest it should be thought that i had published them by the order of the prince or to gain his favour or from opposition to the bishop of mentz i hear there are already several who dream such things but now i can swear in all safety that my theses were published without the knowledge of duke frederick if spalatin solaced his friend and supported him by his influence luther on his part was desirous to meet the requests of the modest chaplain the latter among other questions asked one which is frequently repeated in our day what is the best method of studying the holy scriptures till now my dear spalatin replied luther you have asked questions which i could answer but to direct you in the study of the scriptures is more than i am able to do however if you would absolutely know my method i will not hide it from you it is most certain that we cannot succeed in comprehending the scripture either by study or mere intellect your first duty then is to begin with prayer entreat the lord that he will in his great mercy deign to grant you the true knowledge of his word there is no other interpreter of the word of god than the author of that word according as it is said they will all be taught of god hope nothing from your works nothing from your intellect trust only in god and in the influence of his spirit believe one who is speaking from experience we see here how luther attained possession of the truth of which he was a preacher it was not as some pretend by confiding in a presumptuous reason nor as others maintain by abandoning himself to hateful passions the source from which he drew it was the purest holiest and most sublime god himself consulted in humility confidence and prayer few in our day imitate him and hence few comprehend him to a serious mind these words of luther are in themselves a justification of the reformation luther likewise found comfort in the friendship of respectable laymen christopher schurl the excellent secretary of the imperial city of nuremberg gave him gratifying marks of his friendship we know how pleasant expressions of sympathy are to the man who feels himself assailed from all quarters the secretary of nuremberg did more he tried to make friends to his friend he urged him to dedicate one of his works to a then celebrated lawyer of nuremberg named jerome ebner you have a high idea of my studies modestly replied luther but i have the poorest idea of them myself nevertheless i was desirous to meet your wishes i have searched but in all my store which i never found so meagre nothing presented itself which seemed at all worthy of being dedicated to so great a man by so little a man striking humility it is luther who speaks thus and the person with whom he contrasts himself is dr ebner who is altogether unknown to us posterity has not ratified luther's judgment luther who had done nothing to circulate his theses had not sent them to schurl any more than to the elector and his courtiers the secretary of nuremberg expressed his surprise i had no intention replies luther to give my theses so much publicity i wished only to confer on their contents with some of those who reside with us or near us intending if they condemned to destroy and if they approved to publish them but now they are printed reprinted and spread far and wide beyond my expectation so much so that i repent of their production not that i have any fear of the truth being known by the people for this was all i sought but this is not the way of instructing them there are questions in the theses as to which i have still my doubts and if i had thought that they were to produce such a sensation there are things which i would have omitted and others which i would have affirmed with greater confidence luther afterwards thought differently far from fearing he had said too much he declared that he ought to have said still more but the apprehensions which luther expresses to schurl do honour to his sincerity 
they show that he had nothing like a premeditated plan had no party spirit no overweening conceit and sought nothing but the truth when he had fully discovered the truth his language was different you will find in my first writings said he many years after that i very humbly made many concessions to the pope and on points of great importance concessions which i now detest and regard as abominable and blasphemous Scherl was not the only layman of importance who at this time testified his friendship for luther the celebrated painter albert durer sent him a present perhaps one of his pictures and the doctor expressed his sense of the obligation in the warmest terms thus luther had practical experience of the truth of that saying of divine wisdom a friend loveth at all times and a brother is born for adversity these words he remembered for the sake of others also and accordingly pleaded the cause of the whole population the elector had just levied a tax and it was confidently alleged that he was going to levy another probably on the advice of his counsellor pfeffinger against whom luther often throws out cutting sarcasms the doctor boldly placed himself in the breach let not your highness said he despise the prayer of a poor mendicant in the name of god i entreat you not to order a new tax my heart is broken as well as that of several of your most devoted servants at seeing how much the last has injured your fair name and the popularity which your highness enjoyed it is true that god has endowed you with profound intellect so that you see much farther into things than i or doubtless all your subjects do but perhaps it is the will of god that a feeble intellect instruct a great one in order that no one may trust in himself but only in the lord our god may he deign to keep your body in health for our good and destine your soul to life eternal amen in this way it is that the gospel while it makes us honour kings makes us also plead the cause of the people while it tells them of their duties it at the same time reminds the prince of their rights the voice of a christian such as luther raised in the cabinet of a sovereign might often supply the place of a whole assembly of legislators in this letter in which luther addresses a harsh lesson to the elector he fears not to present a request to him or rather to remind him of a promise viz to give him a new suit this freedom of luther at a moment when he might have feared he had given offence to frederick is equally honourable to the prince and to the reformer but adds he if it is pfeffinger who has the charge of it let him give it in reality and not in protestations of friendship he knows very well how to weave a web of good words but no good cloth ever comes out of it luther thought that by the faithful counsel which he had given to his prince he had well deserved his court dress be this as it may two years later he had not received it and renewed his request this seems to indicate that frederick was not so much under the influence of luther as has been said End of Book 3, Chapter 7